So the concept we are talking about today is the concept of green procurement. And remember, when you talk about green procurement, the focus is that uh, most organizations want to buy green for purposes of uh, ensuring that the environmental is not impacted in any way. And we also said that uh, green procurement is a continuous process. Therefore, you must always do and try to improve the product that you're going to release in the market. The other thing is about uh, green pub public procurement. And we're also saying that green public procurement is all about the government or the authorities trying to come up with policies that will help in ensuring that they are able to embrace uh, products that are not going to impact the environment in any way. And we're also talking about the life cycle of product. And we are saying, when we talk about the life cycle of product, we want to understand the product in terms of the product at introductory stage, growth stage, uh, maturity stage, and, and decline stage. So green procurement or green purchasing are normally used inter interchangeably, but the main focus is to ensure that what you produce as an organization is not going to impact the organization in any way or the environment in any way. So when we talk about green procurement, what comes into our mind is that we have to ensure that the product that we produce in the market are products that are of quality. And quality here, we are saying this product must be products that are going to fit the purpose that the organization produced them to do. The other thing is about cost. And cost here, we are trying to focus on how well we can reduce cost. And remember, the main objective of most organizations that exist today is to be able to reduce cost, either the operational cost or any other cost that they feel is going to affect the organization in the long run when it comes to issues of revenue and issues of profitability. Then the other thing is about delivery. Remember, we're also looking at customers, and customers also play a very critical role. It is therefore important when you are producing this product, ensure that customers are able to get the product on time so that customers will not complain. And remember, customers are one of the most uh, critical stakeholders in any organization that exists today. And obviously, what you produce must be products that are not going to harm the environment in any way. The other thing that we are going to talk about today is the issue of the practices of green procurement. And these are practices that have been there for quite some time now. And organizations are trying to look on ways to increase and also lead to better results when it comes to the issues of practices that are there. So what are some of the, practice, the practices that you need to understand? Number one is utilization of goods with high recycle content. When we talk about goods with high recycling content, we are talking about goods that can be easily recycled for a very long time. And one of the focus for these is to ensure the issue of sustainability, because we are looking at survival and the future generation when it comes to what we produce as organization. Therefore, we need to utilize some of these products and that is why when you look at most companies today, they have been able to come up with strategies that will help them reuse their products. Or some of those products are normally referred to as rotable. You can easily rotate the product or you reuse them every time before they can finally be uh, not utilized again. The other thing is about application of products that are efficient in terms of energy consumption. And nowadays we are focusing on how we can conserve energy. And that is why most companies today, when you look at what they are using in terms of product, they have been able to come up with products that are going to cons con con uh, not consume a lot of energy. For example, a good example is when uh, a company is investing in uh, solar energy. The main focus is uh, to try as much as possible to be able to save on the other energy, which is the hydroelectric power, and use the solar energy so that they can easily save on 
the energy or they can reduce the uh, consumption rate when it comes to organization. The other thing is about employment of goods that are unable to utilize clean, that are able to utilize, uh, utilize clean energy. There has been a focus of clean energy today, and most organizations are trying their level best to embrace technology. And remember, we are in the era of technology. And the only easy way that an organization can do is to be able to adapt on the technology so that as much as they are trying to use the technology, the technology is going to give them clean data and this data is going to be verifiable and it is data that will be used for a very long time. The other thing is about usage of goods that are able to consume less water capacity. Remember, when you talk about water capacity, we are talking about how much water can be included in a particular product. Therefore, it is very important when you are using products, ensure that these products are not going to consume a lot of water because you are trying as much as possible to be able to reserve some of these resources because resources are normally limited. The other thing is about making use of products that are not toxic in nature. So here, our main focus is to ensure that what we are using as organizations are not poisonous products that are going to harm us in any way. And that is why before you can even produce a product, we have a whole team called the quality control team. And the work of the quality control team is to, able, is to be able to do what is called analysis of the product before they can even be produced. And the focus is to ensure that Anything that comes into the environment is something that is good and safe for human consum consumption. Then we're also talking about integration of an environmental management system. Remember, we have a whole system that has been put in place. And the focus of this system is to be able to put parameters in place. And these parameters are going to help in ensuring that no product that is going to harm the environment is introduced in that system. Therefore, the system, remember, is a combination of different subsystems that are put together. And when you talk about these systems, we're also looking at some of the laws that have been put in place, some of the regulations that have been put in place. And these are the laws that will help in ensuring successful implementation of some of these policies in organization. The other thing is about uh, restrictions, tighter restrictions are put in place in organization so that at the end of the day, you already know what you are not supposed to do and what you are supposed to do in the organization. Then the other thing is about reduction of usage of certain substances that may be toxic and pose health problems. There has been a lot of focus nowadays in most organizations, and that is why their focus also is to ensure they are able to embrace um, or come up with uh, packages on how well they can include the employees to health programs. So that as much as you are working for that organization, you also need to take care of yourself. And that is why we also have what is called the, the work balance, work-life balance in most organizations that exist today. Look at a company like Safaricom. They have been able to implement their own medical scheme for purposes of trying to ensure that their employees are taken well care of. So that in the event you feel that you are not feeling well, you can always visit the premise and they are going to ensure that you are well. Other initiatives have been put in place and the main focus of this initiative is to ensure that we have a, a health work environment in some of these organizations. The other thing is about preventive measures against water and air pollution. And that is why we have, in most organizations that exist today, we have what is called reverse osmosis when it comes to the production of, of water. And the focus is trying to recycle the water so that at the end of the day, you can use as, as minimum water as possible so that you don't waste the water. So having known uh, that, the other thing that we have to talk about today is the key principle in green procurement. What is a principle? A principle is like a guide 
or a, a philosophy that you have to follow as as individual or as an organization. And the main focus of a principle is to help you to maximize your potential so that you understand exactly what you're supposed to do based on the principles that have been set in the organization. So what are some of the principles in green procurement? The first principle is clearly understanding the potential impact of the organization's purchase. So you need to understand what is the impact of what the organization is buying in terms of the environment and the community at large. So that what you are buying in the organization is not something that is going to harm the community around. And that is why it is always important that before you can start even a company, you need to, to visit the local community so that they will understand and make them understand what you want to bring on board. So that in the event, they feel this thing is not going to add value to them, they will always reject it. Then the other thing is focusing commitment to development and implement actionable plans. So you need to come up with plans that can be implemented, plans that can be put into action. And those plans are going to address the issue of the environment and how well you can preserve the environment. The other principle is achievement of sustainable goals. So you need to come up with objectives or goals that you want to achieve. And these goals must be measurable and must be monitored. Therefore, the essence of measuring them and monitoring them is trying to figure out the impact of some of these goals. Have you been able to achieve the goals or not? The other principle is enhancement of efficiency through acquisition of green products. So you need to come up with a way of buying green products so that at the end of the day, you are able to reduce issues of energy consumption and also reduce costs, the overall cost in the organization. The other principle is the principle of uh, transparency. And uh, how can we achieve this principle? Is by ensuring that at the end of the day, we are able to involve all stakeholders on the onset so that the stakeholders are well aware in advance what you want to achieve in terms of uh, issues of environment. And that is why it is always important to gain their support so that they are well aware where you want to, to go. The other thing we are going to talk about today is the issue of the benefits that you can accrue when you implement green procurement. And we want to look at these benefits in three ways. And the first way is to look at the benefits from employing green procurement. So how can you benefit when you employ or when you implement green procurement in the organization? Number one is resource efficiency in terms of reduced operational cost. So when you implement green procurement in place, then at the end of the day, you will be able to reduce on operational costs. And operational cost here, we are talking about the day-to-day -day operation of the organization. It is always important to ensure that you use the little resources you have to maximize so that you can reduce the overall cost of the organizations on a day-to-day -day basis. The other thing or of the, or about operational cost is the issue of trying to improve your profitabilities. So once you reduce your operational cost, then it means that you'll be able to increase your profits, both in the short run and in the long run. The other important thing that we need to talk about is boost the health and safety of employees. Most organizations nowadays are focusing on how well they can be able to improve safety of employees. And safety is number one. Safety and health of employee is number one focus of most organizations. And that is why in the event you are not feeling okay, it is always important to visit the nearest hospital. And that is why we have medical covers in place, both the government medical covers and also the specific medical covers that most organizations have put in place. For example, when you look at a company like uh, Safaricom or Equity, they have their own hospitals. So that in the event you are not feeling well, you always need to visit those premises so that they can take care of you. 
The other thing is about inspiring employees' involvement in green purchasing. So one of the benefits of employing green procurement is to inspire employees so that employees can realize their potential that they have within them and trying to build a culture. And this culture is a culture that will help in ensuring better adoption of environment and sustainable practices. So that the moment you involve your employees, your employees will be motivated and they'll be able to share their ideas. And this will also inspire them to also look for new avenues of having better sustainable practices in place. The other thing is about encouraging innovations. And innovation here is giving employees an opportunities or giving employees opportunities or even suppliers an opportunity to develop their own ideas. And once they have those ideas in place, they can also be able to share these ideas so that you can improve on processes, you can improve on products and also improve on many other aspects of the organization. The other thing about employing green procurement is building and supporting green markets. Remember the focus of uh, green procurement is to be able to come up with green products. And once you have those products on board, then it means these products must be taken to the market. And if the products have to be taken into the market, then it means customers are going to buy those products. And this will also improve your business, both in the short run and in the long, long run. Then the other thing is about enhance organization reputation. And reputation here, we are talking about the image of the organization. So it is equally very important. As much as you want to make profits, you also need to look at your image as an organization. And remember, negative publicity is very bad when it comes to organizations. Therefore, it is always important to protect your image without fear or favor. So that in the event people talk bad about your company, you can always have a place to support your company. But also you must ensure that your company is embracing green procurement policies. And this will increase the organization's reputation. So having understood that, we also need to understand what are some of the characteristics of green products or green services or green works. Green products, green services, or green works. So a green product is a tenable product aimed at reducing environmental impact during the whole life cycle. So when you are talking about product whole life cycle, we are looking at the product holistically, where we are also looking at the product from the moment we have the raw materials, the product undergoes work in progress, we have a final product. Once we have a pro final product, we also have the, the, the product will be disposed and all that. And that is what we call the whole life cycle of a product. From the time the product is on the raw material segment up to the time the product will be disposed of or will be consumed by the customer. So green products tend to maximize efficiency and co uh, reduce cost and minimize waste. So the main focus of green products is to be able to minimize waste in any organization by maximizing the efficiency on how the product is produced. Then the other thing is about looking at the product in terms of the product should not be a product that is going to lead to pollution of the environment. So what are some of the key characteristics of green, green product? Number one, these products are organic in nature, organic in nature. When we talk about organic, we are talking about the originality of that product. Therefore, what you produce must be a product in its original state. For example, if it is maize, make sure that you've planted the maize and the maize will germinate. And once it germinates, you are able to harvest the maize, then produce using the maize. Unlike just going to the laboratory, and trying to generate your own maize using chemicals. Therefore, 
that will not be organic in any way. The other thing is about biodegradable in nature. This means that the products that you bring on board must be products that are going to have the three R's of product, and that is recycle, reuse, and the other R is Yes, Alan. So let's continue. So we are also talking about uh, preserved in an economic friendly package. Packaging is one of the critical areas in most products because that is the, the first impact the product has to the person who is going to buy. So organization must take into consideration the packaging of this material. And that is why nowadays they are focusing more on trying to remove the polythene paper bags so that what they bring on board is something that is going to be eco-friendly. Remember these plastic packages sometimes they do not even decompose and this normally affects the environment. And that is why the government of Kenya decided to ban the plastic paper bags. The focus was achieved, at, at least we can see nowadays some progress when it comes to issues of packaging. Uh, the other thing about packaging is that when you have these plastic packages, sometimes you cannot recycle them and they don't even decompose. And that is a major problem. And this might lead to blockages when it comes to issues of the sewer lines and things like that. The other thing is economize on resource employed. So you need to look at the resources that you are going to employ when it comes to the production of these products. And you need to look at the value in terms of getting value at the end of the day. And economy is all about getting value for, for the money. And remember, we talk about resources as being limited and organizations must be able to be economical when it comes to the use of resources. Then the other thing is about eco-efficient depicting cost minimization in terms of energy consumption. So here we are looking at how well can we minimize cost and at the same time consume an energy that is uh, not going to be too expensive for you to manage. Remember, we are also talking about operational cost. And one of the costs is maybe the cost of electricity or the cost of energy. So you need to consume this energy so that at the end of the day, you not affect the business. The other thing is about contribution to reduce in greenhouse gas emission. So greenhouse gas emission, we are talking about carbon emissions to the environment. And this really affects even the ozone layer. And that is why in, in recent past, there has been a focus on how well the government is going to implement issues to do with the planting trees, because there has been a great shift when it comes to the weather patterns, or even uh, uh, typically called the climatic change. There has been a shift in how we used to look at the climate. And nowadays, the climate is not in any way understandable because you might see sunshine at one point, then immediately you find rain and many other things. Therefore, the government is focusing on how well they can plant more trees. And there has been an holiday for that effect. Then the other thing is to donate a minimum use of your plastic and subsequent waste disposal. So plastic has been a major challenge. And when you look at even the Indian Ocean, there has been a lot of the deposits of plastic bags in the Indian Ocean. And this is affecting even the fishes in the sea and the oceans. So there's also been a focus on how well we can tame the issues of plastic. And when you look at a country like uh, Nigeria, for example, there has been a lot of focus on how well they can tame the issues of plastic. Kenya has really succeeded when it comes to issues of plastic. And that is why 
we have a whole department, a whole authority that is doing that uh, legislation, or they are also doing what is called monitoring. Another thing is improved recycl recyclability. And this is all about what you are producing must be products that can be easily recycled. You can easily recycle such products. And the content in those products also can be recycled. And another thing is about reduced use of toxic substances, reduced use of toxic substances. So what are the benefits to consumers? Benefits to consumers. So benefits, we are trying to look at the benefit of uh, products or green products to consumers. So let's continue. So we are, want to understand the benefits to consumers eh, of uh, green products. So number one, when you acquire new products or green products, it will lead to lower cost compared to the traditional products. So green products are kind of cheap as compared to the other products that were produced traditionally. And the other thing is about green products being durable. So you will benefit from durability of the product and like the other products. Then the other thing is about lower maintenance costs. When you buy green products, you'll be able to maintain them at a lower at a slightly lower cost compared to the other products. Then the other thing is about uh, health improvement. So remember we talked about organic, the nature of those products are organic. And organic products are very beneficial when it comes to the health of the people who are going to consume those products. Then the other thing is about uh, greater expansion in the market because uh, customers are well aware of the products. Therefore, they'll try their level best to ensure that they buy the products. And this will also lead to greater market uh, base, which will also lead to the market expansion. So what are the benefits of these products to society? Benefits of the product to society? Then uh, the other benefit is the benefit to society. And here we are saying green products will lead to creation of jobs because of the increase in demand, which will have a ripple effect on the economy, which will in turn lead to the creation of job opportunities. The other thing is uh, of a dependency of non-renewable energy sources of energy rather than renewable sources of energy. So there will be a shift or a paradigm shift with the, the sources of energy. Therefore, more people will be focused on how well they are going to save on energy, which will lead to an increase in a renewable source of energy, like solar energy and uh, wind energy and other forms of energy. Another thing is about preservation of environment from degradation. When you have green products in place, it means that you'll be able to preserve the environment, which will also have a, a, an effect in ensuring eco-friendly products uh, in the environment. So the other thing we need to understand, what are some of the green products that we have? We have Tesla electric cars, we have eco-friendly cleaners, floor cleaners, recycling, carrying bags, toilet rolls, and uh, furniture, and other important products. So having understood all that, we also need to understand the green procurement strategy. So what are some of the strategies that organizations can be able to implement that will enable green procurement. And when you talk about strategy, what comes into our mind is the ploy or the plan that an organization has to ensure that they are able to lead to sustainability when it comes to the products that they are going to produce. And one of the focus is to understand what are some of the drivers 
that lead to an organization to implement green procurement in place. Therefore, we need to jump into and try to look at that. Number one is attainment of greater energy efficiency and the guarantee reduction of the overall operational cost. So one of the plans that the organization has when it comes to green procurement is to be able to attain greater efficiency when it comes to the overall operational cost. And the only way to do this is to implement green procurement. The other thing is about selecting suppliers. So it is always important to select, develop your suppliers so that your suppliers are well aware from the beginning during early supply involvement so that you can share your vision as an organization and your suppliers will be able to follow suit and also produce depending on the standard that you've set for them. Then the other thing is about mitigation of over exploitation. So we are trying our level best to avoid cases of over exploitation of non-renewable sources of energy. And when we talk about non-renewable sources of energy, we are looking at the fossil fuel, for example, the diesel, we have the petrol, we have the paraffins, and any other form of uh, fossil uh, energy that cannot be renewed. So there's a shift that organizations are saying, as much as we really want this energy, we need to shift from non-renewable sources to more renewable sources. And that is why there has been a shift. And even in Kenya today, as we speak, there has been the implementation of electric vehicles. And that is towards sustainability in future. However, there has been some complaints on these uh, electric vehicles and their capacity. However, when you are introducing a new product in the market, those are some of the challenges that you have to face. And these challenges will help you to continuously improve the product. Another thing is about optimization of clean source of energy. So you need to optimize some of these energies, for example, solar energy. How can you optimize solar energy? Therefore, you need to install solar power, uh, solar powers or uh, other form of uh, equipment that can easily tap on this energy and maximize. Look at geothermal power, for example. You can also tap on that. The other thing is about health and safety measures on utilization of toxic and harmful products. So you need to come up with measures that will help you to be able to reduce toxic, toxic products in the market. Then uh, formulation of environmental regulations. So you need to come up with policies that will help in ensuring that organizations implement some of these uh, policies in place. Then uh, increase in waste and recycling capacity through corporate trainings and waste management trainings. So you need to come up with a curriculum that will help people during trainings, they'll be able to brainstorm and come up with ideas that will increase their awareness when it comes to green procurement and strategy. Another thing is to encourage use of eco-friendly packaging materials. And this is also a focus in most organizations. And there has been a campaign that is talking about sustainability in packaging. So what are some of the plans that we have in place that will lead to better procurement strategies? So having understood that, we need also to understand some of the steps that you need to follow when you are coming up with the, some of these plans. The first step is proof of environmental certification by potential suppliers during vetting process. So when you are vetting your suppliers, it's always important to put a requirement in your clauses that will lead to uh, compliance and issues of certification, either local certification or international certif certification on the issues of environment. Let it be a requirement in your eligibility criteria when coming up with the bidding documents. Then the other thing is to formulate a solid green code of conduct. And code of conduct is just a guide on some of the morals 
that suppliers need to have. And uh, these models will be adopted by most organizations. And this will also lead to better ways of coming up with the products. Then the other thing is the conduct re regular trainings on key suppliers. So always have seminars for your suppliers so that you can share, you can educate them so that they can know, so that they can also go and implement on their processes. The other thing is about measure and monitor green performance. So you also need to put parameters in place or factors that you need to consider that will play a great deal in trying to measure the performance of your suppliers and also rate the, your suppliers so that they are well aware. And lastly, you also need to lead by example. Be on the forefront of ensuring that at the end of the day, you are the leader when it comes to issues of policy, when it comes to issues of standard and many other aspects in the organization.